Lehto. And for the past couple of years, I worked for a company called Muuri Tutkimus, which is a Finnish commercial archaeology company, which is known for developing and testing new digital documentation methods and also teaching them to archaeologists, both students and already uh, archaeologists on the field. And for example, Muuri Tutkimus was one of the very first companies in Finland to start using total station for excavation years ago. And now we are one of the very few that uses laser scanner when it's suitable uh, for the site. So these are our three excavation sites for the past three years that we have been excavating graves. These are all uh, three sites are from the 19th century. Uh, the very first one, the Kölyö one, is different from all the uh, from the two others, as these uh, graves were actually inside the Kölyö church under the floor, when the other two are actual cemeteries outside. So there's uh, quite a bit of difference there. And um, you can also see the difference uh, how we uh, documented different sites. And at Rauma, we uh, on the second year at Rauma, we used the uh, laser scanner. Uh, to document the well-preserved graves. Uh, the ones that were really poorly preserved, we didn't use laser scanner for. I know the same thing with um, uh, surfaces, coffins and finds at all sites were documented with uh, laser, uh, with the total station and not uh, hand drawing. Hand drawing was used for the actual graves on other sites. And um, in Turku this year, we use photochromatry for a few graves, but as we just finished the excavation, I don't have material for that, so I will not be concentrating on photochromatry this time, but uh, actual for the laser scanning. So here I'm talking a bit about how much time is needed for documenting a grave on the, with these two different methods. Uh, but we have to remember that these times are only from our experience this year with the laser scanner and there are several things that affect how much time is actually needed. And one of them is, for example, with the laser scanner is the amount of rec uh, reflectors needed uh, for positioning the, the scan. We had 20, which is a lot because the minimum requirement for the system is 3. So if you use, for example, 10, you would, of course, diminish the time needed for this type of documentation. And also finding and measuring the reflectors is the most time consuming part of this work. So diminishing that amount would uh, greatly uh, help with the time. And the other one is the accuracy of the scan. We did a whole 360 degree uh, scan of so the whole area with the um, accuracy of four millimeters uh, for each point, 10 meters from the scanner. So that's very accurate. And in addition to that, we did a more accurate scan of the only the graves. And, but then we noticed afterwards when we processed the data that these more accurate scans did not bring that much more extra good information that we didn't already get from the uh, 360 scans. So next time we would be doing this, we would probably skip this uh, more accurate scan to save time again. And with the laser scanner, we usually had something between one to four graves while we are scanning at every one time. When, of course, if you draw by hand, you draw that one grave, not four at the same time. So that also affects it. And then with any method of documenting you choose doing anything, it's also the person doing the documentation that affects it hugely. For us, this was, uh, we were teaching ourselves how we're doing it. We actually originally, this uh, originated at the University of Helsinki, where Muuri Tutkimus actually held a course for archaeologists, for students, uh, for laser uh, scanner, how to use that in documenting. And then we uh, started doing it uh, or learning how to do it on the field afterwards. And so we tried different things while we did. We decided this doesn't work as well as the other one. And so we, in the end, we got to the method that we thought works best for us. Next time, of course, now if we go to a field and we have graves that we want to laser scan, we already know how the process works, so we'll be a bit fit faster. Okay, but then when we get to the uh, processing the material afterwards, and this is uh, a bit different from actually doing, uh, doing um, the field work, because uh, this is the most time-consuming part. And doing the field work is actually pretty simple. Actually, everybody in our team knows how to use the laser scanner on the field. It's not that difficult. But then when you process the data afterwards, that takes more skill. It's more software you need to know how to use and all that. So uh, it is uh, not everybody knows how to do it as easily, at least. And I have not listed every step of the process here, but I have divided it into three. And there are several steps in each of them that are needed uh, to do. But uh, again, here is the 
think that how much time you need also, of course, depends on what you are actually, what do you want to do with the data. If the end product that we wanted was auto photos, we would basically already have that on the field. And the time needed afterwards wouldn't be uh, that great. But the, at the moment, the end product that was wanted from us for both years for drawing by hand and the laser scanner is this. On the left is a hand drawn, a part of a map that is uh, from a hand drawn graves. And on the right is a map, a part of a map that is originally made with the laser scanner. It's actually these three graves that are in a 3D mesh volume here, are here hand drawn. And that is the format we actually have. And it ending up from the point cloud to this actually takes much more, to, takes more time than ending up with this. But it always depends what is actually wanted from us, that uh, how much time it takes. So did we learn anything from this? After all, this was originally a university course and all that. The field work part is not any slower with the laser scanner than it is with uh, drawing by hand, especially if you can uh, document several graves or st structures or whatever you, it is you are documenting at the uh, same time. But on the other hand, I would not use a laser scanner for 2D. You need the 3D element for whatever you're documenting to there's any point of using a laser scanner. Just a blank surface 2D, I would not use. Personally, I would not use a laser scanner, but a total station and photos and all that. But for the graves and other whatever 3D structures, that is, uh, that is a good thing. And then the thing is that the end product with the laser scanning uh, data uh, is versatile. It can be many things. It can be a polyline drawing, like we had there previously. Uh, it can be auto photos, as mentioned earlier. It can be something for virtual or augmented reality. There are really just a few, these are just a few examples what you can actually do uh, with the data. But then one of the uh, main things that we have talked about about data here before today is that with the, you can always return to the point, point cloud. You can, uh, 10 years from now, someone go, uh, can go back to our uh, point cloud data and say, how on earth did she come up with the 3D polyline drawing from this data? You can always go back and make your own interp interpretations and new assessments of the data. Especially if you, you learn something new about something, new theories, you can go back to the data, which is not as easily possible if you have hand-drawn everything. It's you can't make as many interpretations from that as well. And that was really it. Thank you very much.